Another important figure in George Washington's life is someone who was certainly a direct influence, and that was his father, Augustine Washington. Augustine Washington was born in Maddox Creek, Westmoreland County, Virginia in 1694. His father, Lawrence Washington, died at the young age of 39 years old when Augustine was only four years old in 1698 and was interred at the family cemetery down the road in Bridges Creek. So Augustine remembered little of his own father. He left a sizable estate to his wife and three children, though his personal property alone consisted of 406 pounds and 32,509 pounds of tobacco. Two years later, his mother married George Gale, and, and during the autumn of 1700, the family moved to England. Their family life abroad was cut short, though, as Augustine's mother died a year later when he was only seven years old. His stepfather was a kind man and sent Augustine and John to the Appleby School in England. Their schooling, though, was cut short also because a year or two later, the boys had to return to Virginia to live with their older cousin, John Washington of Chotank, whose plantation was located on the Potomac, about 20 miles up the river here from Bridges Creek. Not a lot is known about Augustine's teenage years, but you can bet that he enjoyed it here while living with a variety of relatives whose farms were located on the wooded south shore of the Potomac River. Augustine Washington married Jane Butler, the daughter of Caleb Butler, who was a successful Westmoreland County lawyer and planner. They had four children. Butler, born in 1716, but died in infancy. Lawrence, 1718, who built and named Mount Vernon. Augustine Jr., born in 1719. And Jane, who was born in 1722. In 1717, Augustine Washington bought 150 acres of land on Pope's Creek from Joseph Abington, just a beautiful tract of land overlooking the Tidal Creek and the Potomac River. Pope's Creek ran across the east side of the tract and was approximately a half mile wide and joined the Potomac a half mile away. From Augustine's land, the river could be seen clearly as it was over five miles wide from the Virginia side to the Maryland shore in the distance. The track probably included Abingdon's home because the purchase covered all houses, edifices, buildings, tobacco houses, and orchards and gardens. Sometime between 1723 and 1725, Augustine Washington hired David Jones, a local carpenter and undertaker, to build a house on his Pope's Creek property for 5,000 pounds of tobacco with extra amounts in cash for incidentals. Augustine had the brick for his new home made right here on the plantation grounds, the foundations built, and many timbers hewed for the building before Jones began construction of the house. Augustine also had Jones construct two bedsteads, one cradle, two mantel pieces, and a small poplar table. But David Jones died in 1725 before the Washington house could be completed and Augustine finally was able to complete the home's construction in 1726. The house was about six years old at the time of George's birth. Augustine's wife, Jane Butler Washington, only lived in their new Pope's Creek home for three years when in 1729, at the age of 30 years old, she passed away. 16 months after Jane's death on March 6, 1731, Augustine married another young lady from the Northern Neck, Mary Ball. Mary was born in Epping Forest in Lancaster County and was left an orphan at the age of 12. Between that time and her marriage to Augustine Washington, she was 23 years old and had lived with two prominent Westmoreland County families, the George Eskridges and the Samuel Bonhams. George Eskridge was a kind guardian to her and was like a real father to Mary and is believed that she later named her firstborn after him. Following her marriage to Augustine, Mary moved to his Pope's Creek home where his three children were in need of a new mother. She soon gained the respect of her stepchildren, Lawrence 13, Augustine 12, and Jane about nine years old. Mary was well accustomed to farm life and quickly assumed her new duties as mistress and manager of the household. So the time no doubt passed very quickly for her as the birth of their son in February 1732 approached. 
Augustine and Mary Washington had no idea that their son would become this immortal figure in the history of a new nation. George Washington was born in this house on February 22, 1732. He, he lived here until the age of three and a half when the Washington family moved away from the farm, moving to Mount Vernon. It's not known when George left the Pope's Creek Plantation for the last time, but when he did leave, it must have been with a little bit of sadness. I mean, if you just look at this area, it's just absolutely spectacular, and that must have been unforgettable to a young teenage boy who was very much a product of his experiences. He was a man of some influence in his community, having held at various times the positions of Justice of Westmoreland County Court, Captain in the County Militia, Sheriff of Westmoreland County Court, and Vesterman of his church. He was part owner of two iron furnaces, one in Akakeek, Virginia, and the other one in Principio, Maryland, and was financially able to visit England on two occasions to deal directly with his partners there. He owned land and buildings in three Virginia counties and held at least 49 slaves. Though not as wealthy as other landowners in Northern Virginia, he was still very much a man of very good social standing. Augustine passed away in 1743 at the Ferry Farm in what is today Fredericksburg. George was only 11 years old at that time. He would later remark about his father, Augustine lived at the ancient mansion seat in Westmoreland County where he died and was interred in the family vault. And that's really all that he ever would say about his father.